chaps have got Chris. Um, Chris, you're a lecturer at I've forgotten your university. Keel, Keel University. Where, where's Keel? I should I should have it's, been. It's near Stoke. It's, it's sort of in Staffordshire. Well, yeah. okay. Wow. It's okay. kind of in the middle of it, like it's in a big sort of uh, countryside kind of area, really, on top of a hill. But yeah, it's from the nearest town is Stoke on Trent. Ah, okay. The office. That's the office, wasn't it? Slough, that is, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. There, there we go. <laughs> I lived, the only thing on TV I watch is EastEnders. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, um, but anyway, I, I digress. So I apologize. You, mm. you, you, you've done a lot. You've done a, not a talk, a presentation. What do you want to call it? I've forgotten the. I mean, it's research, really. So the That's idea what... of it was is a research into um, and producing these what we call an intervention. So producing these materials that are meant to try and alleviate body image issues in men so it's a at the moment the form is a series of, of slides basically that we've kind of created and then i just had a paper published that showed the simple version is we showed it to men and it kind of improved their body image and yeah. so the yeah. next step is to kind of look at it in a bit more detail and see if it works over over a longer period of time and, and things like that so that's the that's the upshot of it basically it's trying to um tr almost tr uh, train uh, social media users or particularly Instagram users to reflect on the images they see, the idealized body images they see, um, and and reduce the influence they have, the un the, un the negative influence they have. Yeah, and it's geared particularly uh, towards men. So the the that there are unique body image body image issues for women and, and men. So. Uh, women are more um, focus more on thinness, or certainly in the West, there's this thin ideal. Um, you know, it, it is good, um, and then men, th there is that, there is there is a thin ideal, a sort of slimness, but there's a lot more focus on muscularity and leanness. So yeah. intervention materials or anything that addresses body image issues has to take account of that. We can't just take stuff that we have for women and just and give it to men, but we have to kind of tailor it a little bit and take into account those particular body image issues and then also the materials normally have um, women in them so we obviously have to kind of put male exemplars in there when we when we show them to men so that's what that's what I've done and then yeah it's been shown the research that I've done is it's kind of a first step to show that this does seem to help it does seem to um, alleviate body image issues at least in the short term anyway yeah well I will do the whole tagging linky stuff in, in, in there because it's it's a long read, I'd say, but it's it's a bloody good read. So it's a well done. Yeah, so you see, we've we've man up. I don't think we've actually spoken about body image that much. We, we've spoken to people who are hardcore powerlifters, right? Okay, and they've bounced around where they've had to nip it in nip it in the bud before it become a proper addiction. Yeah, and and, and steroids and all this kind. Of, but we've bounced around it, but we've never actually spoken about it. Yeah, but it's it's it's. I think you said earlier, I don't think it's a taboo. It's just like a hidden subject. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like uh, so. So uh, women's body image issues I feel feel like it's certainly in popular culture. They're very well known and very well recognised. And we're almost well, I mean, we're not we're not there yet, but there's quite a lot of progress towards trying to reduce those things, reducing the sort of idealisation of body image image issues. So you see a, a lot more diversity in terms of. Um, the, the type of women used in adverts and the type of women that appear in the media. There's a lot more diversity and there's a lot more recognition that it isn't really a great thing to be showing people images of a model and saying, you should look like this. Well, it's it's for me. Yeah, because it's Sorry. funny. I remember that there's an advert going on with all women different shapes. I think it's body form or tampon or something. Yeah, like I think that. so. And Dove the, also have their, their ones as well. Yeah, and but actually you're right. I don't think there's anything targeted <laughs> like that at men. Not really. I mean, the, the I think not, again, that, not, that, not that I've seen anyway. Yeah, right. So it's obviously not ubiquitous in the same way. So, but the, there is a growing issue with men as well, and the culture hasn't really quite come around to recognizing that. Um, the the interventions and the way of alleviating it isn't quite there, and yeah, and men aren't quite as good as art, at articulating and dealing with those issues as as women are. You know, typically we find that you know, that's not always the case. I think that the the um the picture of a man who's completely closed off and won't talk about his feelings is maybe a bit old fashioned now, but certainly yeah. it's not as easy. We don't have the capacity or the tools, the mental tools to do it quite as well as perhaps we should. So yeah, there's this sort of growing issue, and um you know you see it in in the various um programs that you see on the media, lots of um images of guys very you know very fit, muscled, showing off, 
and you know that can and then in films there's lots of you know very buff guys kind of running around and they are still a little bit um uh objectified to some extent that you don't see as much with with uh women in the media like you still see it with women in yeah. the media as well but it's almost um it almost feels a bit like it's kind of okay a bit more to do it for men and um yeah so it's trying to kind of address that a little bit yeah no that's that, that's interesting I'll be, I'll be careful on that but it, yeah it, it does seem to be acceptable for women to show i think i said before tom hardy, tom hardy right, yeah. Yeah. all women love tom hardy that, that, that's yeah funny. And uh, you see little joke, you know, little jokes about da- like dad bod is this sort of like kind yeah. of seems like it's okay to kind of talk to talk about. I'm not quite sure. I, I think it's like a guy who's fairly fit but maybe got a bit of a paunch. Like yeah. that is a sort of acceptable kind of thing to say. You see it in sometimes. I mean, you know, I've watched have to watch Peppa Pig sometimes, and they're often talking about how the dad in that is like a big I've got a big fat tummy and stuff like this. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of it's all sort of normalized. So those that kind of attention drawing. It's definitely not. It definitely happens a lot more these days. And of course, it happens, yeah. it happens for women as well. But I think we're rec- um It happens a lot for women. I think we're we're starting to recognise it's inappropriate, and maybe we're slightly lagging behind. Um, yeah, yeah we, more, more people are willing to call it out when it when if they see it. Right. Because I, I use LinkedIn all. The, I use LinkedIn quite a lot. And do you want know, some of the some of the, a section of LinkedIn is so toxic. It is right. Out, toxic but even with that I, I see when somebody like one of my friends amy sorry, mom, so amy um she's got long black she's got long black hair and all this kind of stuff and she's a good friend actually but i've seen comments with her where people have like oh like really weird sleazy stuff but yeah people, and i've done it myself people will call it out and say mate yeah just sort it out but if it was the other way like let's pick on a, a, an image of tom hardy or whatever else you know, it does seem a little bit tiny more acceptable, doesn't it? But I yeah. think it's also what, what I was saying earlier. I think it, I don't think I was on here. People aren't going to like what I'm going to say, but I think it's harder for both. I'm going to say it because because I've had the conversation with other people. You you already know what's coming, but it's just in a in a straight relationship. If if a woman if a woman sees, let's just pick on Tom Hardy because it seems to be acceptable. There we go. Think about Tom Hardy. No, no, exactly <laughs> that. But it's just uh, the thing is, that if someone, so a woman will always say to the to fellas, "Oh, maybe you should go to the gym for a little bit," or "Unless you, you've got a bit of a belly going on," or it doesn't really matter what it is. And it seems socially bit, socially bit, socially acceptable to do that. A man wouldn't dare say that to a woman. <laughs> Well, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say one one has got it harder than the other. I think those sort of comparisons maybe don't add too much there. But there's yep. certainly, yeah, there's certainly, uh, yeah, it's certainly more permissible maybe, I think. You know, I mean, of course, like I say, I'm not saying, I'm not saying uh, we don't do this to women anymore, but we do it to men. That's far too simplistic of you. Still oh, no, we, we do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, it still happens all the time. But I think there's, there's increasingly more recognition that it's inappropriate. And that is somewhat lagging behind for men. So, you know, men, men don't yet have the articulation and the tools to be able to kind of say, I feel bad about my body and I shouldn't. And I need to kind of address that. Like, well, why is this happening? Where is it coming from? Yeah, we're, we're not quite we're not quite there yet with that. And um, yeah. so that's yeah. kind of what I'm interested in doing is seeing if we can we can work on that a bit, really. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think this is a, the downside to social media, especially Instagram. I'd I'd agree on that one. Um, is comparison? Yes. The comparison, and I'm seeing it more and more and more. Is comparison is one of the biggest issues with, with self confidence. Yeah, I mean that is the essence of, of of what I've mentioned in my paper that social media, and particularly like say Instagram, is a repository of comparisons. You know, you can compare yourself to people on it. And it's not very good, you know, it's a very poor comparison. And that's the kind of, that's the, that's the essence of the materials that I've created is trying to get people to explicitly recognize the the unsuitability of the things that they see. So people people kind of know, like intuitively know, oh, yeah, we know like, Instagram's not real, you know, people fake stuff on Instagram or whatever. But what we like to try, excuse me, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do with my research is make that much more embedded, much clearer, much more explicit so that people have the kind of mental tools to pick apart the images they see and say, okay, that guy, that guy looks really uh, buff and amazing in that picture, but okay, he's 
has he has he worked out before that picture? We know. I mean, I know from reading interviews with uh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman might be my yeah. Tom Hardy for you, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Jackman, where he looks super brilliant and buff as as Wolverine, and he says in interviews that was the, that was my work. That's the worst day of my life. I hadn't drunk anything all morning because I wanted to be all dehydrated so that my muscles. Oh, of course, were yeah, good. yeah. I'd done a quick workout before then, so I was exhausted. I was hungry because I'd only had like chicken. For breakfast but on the screen you just thought, wow he looks amazing and you don't realize that you know yeah great his body looks good but he he would be much ha- happier you know you wouldn't really want to go through or or couldn't go through what he's gone through to get to that and so recognizing you know that's not a great that's not that's not someone you should be comparing yourself to you shouldn't be looking at that image you as a person you know that works in an office and goes to the gym maybe twice a week. It's not fair for you to be going, oh, I don't know, like Hugh Jackman. Of course you don't. He does that for a living. It's his job. And yeah. he gets paid millions to do it. And it's still a horrible experience for him. So that's the kind of, that's the that's what I'm trying to do with this work is, is create those kind of tools where you can pick apart these images and look at them and recognize that, you know, it's not good for you to be comparing yourself to that person. That person is not a fair comparison for you. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's a valid point, especially I remember there's one video, there's a, there a woman, I think, what was it? I did a video with a guy who called it out. There's a woman in the in the gym, but she had these like, butt plate things, what puts down the back of the trousers. Right. Um, to, to basically make her a backside look, look bigger right, okay. whatever else. So, so, I, so I get what I was trying to do. And, and I, I remember this guy called it out and he got so much hate for it. It's like, you're trolling, you're trolling. It's like, no, all I'm saying is, is if you're, if you're willing, if you're looking at people trying to compare yourself, yeah. well, you can't because the, I don't think this woman, it was some influence. I don't, I don't know who it is. I've forgotten who it is, but you can't compare to something which isn't real. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, uh, you know, there is research looking at whether um, putting labels on things saying, you know, this has been photoshopped or this has been, um manipulated in some way whether that actually has an effect on body image i mean the the evidence is a little bit mixed i mean sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sometimes people still are still influenced by what they see they don't appreciate quite how much manipulation has gone into that image so yeah so there are kind of two routes that i look at in my my research and my my kind of toolkit the first one is the one we've kind of just been discussing which which is what we call media literacy Mm -hmm. so that is um getting people to recognize the truthfulness of the images they see and critique them basically. And we all kind of do that to some extent, you know, you look at images, you can see them sometimes on magazines or whatever and go, well, that's photoshopped, you know, like that's ridiculous. But refining that, that knowledge set, refining that mental tool set is quite important. So that's one route. The other route is a bit more different and that's um, something where we try and get people to recognize the thoughts that they have the negative thoughts usually that they have, recognize them, evaluate them, and hopefully um, undo or, or reduce the influence they have. Because when people look at images of, of someone with an idealized body, they often make automatic and even sometimes unconscious uh, comparisons and attributions. They look at it and think, oh, I'll never look as thin as that. I'll never, I'll never have a body like that. I'm so ugly, I'm so fat or whatever. And obviously that's really bad, right, for your mental mm-hmm. health. So training people to recognize that is really important. It's very similar to the techniques that they use in something called cognitive behavioral therapy, where you get people to recognize, so particularly for, say, for depression, you get people to recognize the aberrant cognitions they have. So, for example, um, someone with depression may may be thinking, um, nothing ever goes right for me. You know, that's one of the things that they're always thinking, you know, my my life's terrible, nothing nothing ever goes right. I've I've, I've been there, yeah. Right, yeah. So, So the idea is to get them to recognize those things and then kind of pick them apart basically and say, well, you know, is that really true? You know, can we replace that with a more positive or constructive cognition? Like, okay, stuff has gone wrong for me at the moment, but you know, I can I can do something about it or whatever. So that's the kind, that's the second uh, front of attack, if you like. We can get people to recognize the falseness of the images that they see and also get them to try and realize when they are making these comparisons and try and reduce the influence that those comparisons have on them yeah uh, absolutely so just before before we draw to a close a close in there, there's my little cue <laughs> it's, it's, uh, just look, look it up there but it's it's just so if somebody's what 
if so, I was going to say if they're triggered by this, not really a trigger a triggering video, but if someone's watching this, I oh know, and they're in between, it's going to go on social media, so it seems yeah. completely and utterly hypocritical, but it's just, if somebody's watching this, in, I don't know, they're in that bubble of just scroll, 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 and just feeling shit. Mm. What, would you, what would you say? What, 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 give them some tips. That's what I want to say. Mm. Yeah, okay. So I think a lot of these things, like the things that I've said, are almost, in a way, you feel like they're kind of obvious. Like I say, we all kind of know that stuff is is um, is faked on social media or whatever. But what we don't often do is explicitly recognise that, acknowledge it, and probably, properly analyse it and take it apart and think, okay, yeah, it's fake. So should I really be looking at that guy? Should I really be looking at that guy and comparing myself to him? You know, what's going on here? Can I critique this a little bit? Can I think about what that guy does and what he has available to him? And what I've got, is that a fair comparison? So a- acknowledging these things, recognising them, and starting to turn them over a bit more explicitly in your mind is really valuable. It can really make you think about it. Educating yourself about how images are manipulated. It's so easy to manipulate images nowadays. You don't need a computer. You don't need Photoshop. You can do it on your phone. You know, mm-hmm. instead, if you've got a spot, I mean, I've done it myself. You can do it on your phone. You can just go there. It's so easy to manipulate images. And it's not always recognizable you know you don't all what you you don't realize that uh, most of the images you see in, in the media are manipulated you know some are obvious but so that recognition that what you see isn't necessarily true cri- you, you know picking it apart critiquing it and then that other route that i mentioned thinking about okay what if i'm making comparisons to hugh jackman i'm saying okay should i be why should i be comparing myself to this guy who is uh, you know a full-time actor gets paid millions all he does is is, is work out that's his whole job you know I, I shouldn't really be going oh I don't look like that of course I don't uh, how could I possibly I, I haven't got the time or resources to do it you know so be, drawing your you're drawing your attention to those things and um explicitly recognizing them and working on them is very valuable I think yeah it really helps you know you've got these kind of nebulous oh yeah I know it's not true and I know I shouldn't really be looking at um Hugh Jackman but solidifying that crystallizing it and actually strategically making sure you're not doing it i think is really valuable yeah no absolutely so, so it's basically basically in a nutshell i'm sorry it's just taking a bit of just a minute longer just to process it isn't it absolutely yeah absolutely like i say these these thoughts can be automatic and they can be pervasive and we know that social media and you know, they've got these algorithms so if you if i look up a picture of some guy you know uh if I, i'm looking at buff if I'm looking at buff guys on my uh, social you, you media, do, you do whatever you want to do, man. I'm not going to judge. <laughs> um, you know, um, more, I'm probably going to get more popping up, right? Because it kind yeah. of, it, it kind of um, shows you more of what you're, what you look at. If you know what I mean. Yeah, so yeah, yeah it, your your algorithm is going to start filling you, filling your feed with things about people doing exercise, people lifting weights, people doing this. You know, and that's only going to make matters worse. So yeah, like you say, just taking a minute taking everything with a bit of a pinch of salt, recognising that you are unfairly comparing yourself is 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 quite valuable, yeah, quite important. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, that. I think it's just all the start of a suspicious mind, isn't it, really? Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's uh, absolutely. So so just, out of in- so just out of interest, do you think, we'll pick on social media, I think, like, Elon Musk, I can't stand that, but I really can't. That's right. just my personal thingy, but you can't do a charity anyway, so there we go. Uh, <laughs> but you, you can buy it via charity commitment, but I'll, I'll digress. But that's just my personal opinion. I don't like him. But the one thing, I, I was speaking to someone, when he announced he's going to start charging for Twitter or, or X. Yeah. And on one hand, as somebody who runs a couple of businesses, I'm like, oh, no, 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 that would be really bad. But actually, as somebody who's a CEO of a mental health charity, I think he'll be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting that because I think loads, I've seen loads of people saying, oh, no. Uh, oh, once I see someone saying, oh, yeah, please start charging so I can leave this horrible platform. And it's like, well, you could leave now if you want. You know, That's an like, interesting comment. You know, yeah, so it's quite interesting. Sure. Oh, yeah. So really, I mean, uh, these social media platforms could do a lot more to draw attention to these things. Instagram recently um, had a feature, have a, has a feature now where you can change the number of likes that you have on your post to just say, um, so it says like so and so like this and others. It used to say like it's got you know three thousand likes or whatever. Yeah. And you're only here with that. So what we so the more likes a uh, thing gets, the more valid it's usually seen as being. So by reducing the 
that you can kind of that that's like interesting that's interesting you said that because the thing is is yeah i guess on facebook and all of our social media we've got a good few thousand blah blah, blah and all this yeah. kind of stuff. i think someone said it was like eight thousand on facebook and but um but our engagement as in people our messages is really high sadly um is really really high our engagement as in likes and comments is is very very low mm. get a lot of impressions then but since we turned off since i turned off showing who liked it right, oh, right. Me, things have gone up facebook's still a little bit uh, a little bit of a graveyard sometimes but we get the messages but instagram since we've turned all of that that all of that engagement stats off yeah. like chris and others yeah it's got it's gone up but strange enough since we've done that more people comment oh that's really interesting yeah so it's i mean it, seeing that sort of thing is very influential on whether you choose yeah. to like it whether you comment you know all those sort of things do do have an effect so yeah i mean you can you can kind of imagine that um yeah it could be beneficial these these things are you know there's a lot of i mean they get a bad rep and there's good stuff out there too it does depend on what you look at and what your feed's like but when it's bad, it's, it is really bad. It can be really, you know, there's lots of toxic elements to it. We've talked about images, body image issues, but of course there are communication platforms as well. And we know that people get all sorts of toxic messages through, but, you know, celebrities get all sorts of horrible things through their mm -hmm. Twitter and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, it can be a real, you know, swamp really. Um, uh, yeah, it's quite difficult to sometimes pick out the good from the bad really. And that can be quite, quite problematic a lot of the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. But that was a good call. That was a really good one. What I'll do is I'll do the whole taggy stuff and linky stuff in the field. Let me hit that record button one second.